I decided to bring out a little drip, a little something different. You feel me? Even got the cool engraves on today. Uh, I mean, mean, there's something there, there's something about the way he says drip that works versus the way I say drip that makes all of America uncomfortable. Okay, if you're tuning in for the first time to Countdown to Game Day, covered by State Farm, this is what we're going to do. For the next 30 minutes, we're going to get you caught up on all of the action happening all day, and it is a crazy day for college basketball. There is a ton of it. So, yeah. obviously, you can stay here in the ESPN app or wherever you're watching this, and you can watch basketball in the app all day if you authenticate. Uh, the game we're getting ready for, number 10, Baylor taking on number 5, Kansas, 8 Eastern on ESPN in the ESPN app. Uh, that's going to be our big one tonight, but there is a whole slate of games, and uh, let's oh, yeah. bring in a little bit of expertise. You ready? I think we should. All right. We so definitely should. We like to start things off with our starting five. Five key games we're watching today. And we're going to get a breakdown on that with our buddy Dallin Cuff. Dallin, thanks for joining us, my friend. We appreciate you. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing very well. Uh, Scooby, that is I, that's the first time I got a full picture, full body shot of you, by the way. I think you've got a little boomerang uh, Eddie Murphy vibe, too, if I will. <laughs> oh, I oh yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? I like that. I- Eddie Murphy is a legend, so I'll, I'll take Eddie Murphy comparisons anytime I can get it. Old Shout man, old goat. man statement here, but the soundtrack to Boomerang, by the way, was was amazing, and I look like I'm homeless, uh, Dallin. So, okay, let's get to the first game coming on here. That's number four, Purdue at Michigan State. That's noon Eastern on ESPN. Dallin, what are you looking for in this one? Uh, Michigan State definitely needs a win here. This is this is a team that really can struggle offensively their guard play is a problem and why that's an issue is that man right there and Purdue's offense is outstanding Jaden Ivey is going to be a top five pick in the NBA draft absolute stud off the bounce continues to be just dynamic up and down the court Zach Eady is a seven foot four monster Travion Williams the best passing big in the country they've got it all and they can fill they got all those weapons around them they got a bunch of guys that make three the most efficient offense in the country and why I say this is it does travel Michigan State has to be able to score with the Boilermakers I don't think they can do that they may take it to cover city I don't think they win this game, although they desperately, desperately need to because they're on a serious plot. Yeah, it's, it's been a struggle for Michigan State. Like you like you just saw, five out of the last six games. So uh, Purdue is a win that they can definitely use because, man, I don't even know if they're going to make the tournament at this point. Uh, bubble watch is getting uncomfortable. Yeah. Let's go next to number seven, Duke, taking on Syracuse. Dallin, you remember when Syracuse was good? That's six Eastern on ESPN. Right, right, uh, ESPN. <laughs> what are you looking for in this one? You're taking shots at the Orange right there. I am. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I am. The Orange used to be good. They used to produce pros. It's a different team. They're, they're a hardworking bunch. Let's say that. Bless their heart, if you will. <laughs> down the but this is going to be going to be a tough game. I know it'll be cool because it is Coach K's final time to play against Jim Beheim, their buddies. But when they played down in Durham, they carved up this zone, man. This young team looked like they were totally unfazed by it. They got into the high post of the, where that ACC is, is where you want to get it. Uh, against that zone. They kicked it out, broken threes. A.J. Griffin was good. Paolo Bancaro was comfortable. They just torched that team. And I, I don't, maybe they don't beat them as badly when they're playing on the road, but I do think they control this game, and ultimately they do win quite comfortably. And bear in mind, Duke is still looking for an ACC championship in the regular season. This team, every game is critical for them to get better and hopefully reach their, reach their potential. They may be the most talented team in the country. I've kept saying, I don't think they have enough time to get as good as they need to get to win a title. So every game is critical. Can they turn in a big 40 minutes on the road? I think they can. Yeah, definitely. These ACC matchups uh, are definitely interesting. And, Dallin, you wrote a great article on ESPN, uh, ESPN Plus, for those that don't know. And you said you would give Duke a sprinkle. So I'm, I'm a little bit more in on Duke, and I think they're going to play really well today, especially since they smacked them last time. So the sprinkle this week, let's see if they can get it done. Hey, okay, speaking of sprinkling, I've been sprinkling a little joy all over the <laughs> SEC on this show yeah. all year round. And this is my time to gloat and remind everybody how good the top of the standings are. Look at this. Auburn, Kentucky, Arkansas, and Tennessee separated by just a couple of games, and there are some huge games coming up in the SEC today. First up, number six, Kentucky at number 18, Arkansas. Dallin, what are you hyped on in this one? Well, hold on real quick, Scooby. The sprinkle is about a futures bet to win a championship. They're at 10 to 1. So if you want to toss a little cash in there, that's the sprinkle situation. Just a little? Just a little? Just a little. It's still a little bit of a longer shot. But anyway, I digress. Kentucky, <laughs> don't get the sprinkle. You straight up buy them. The problem is they got injuries, and Arkansas is legit, man. This team, J.D. Note's been outstanding. The guard is stepping up in any big game they have. He's made critical plays, second in the SEC in scoring. Uh, he's got a great defensive team around him. They love to play at pace. And Jalen Williams at 6'10". Dude takes – he's on his for 40 charges this year, guys. Now, granted, I would say half of them are blocks, but we don't need to get into that, you know, block charge discussion right now. That said, though, Jalen Williams has been an absolute beast in this game. He'll have to be critical again when you've got a few way to battle with the interior. The problem for Kentucky is they're dealing with injuries. I Washington has been out the last couple games. 
He's not, like, Coach Cal said he's not going to play them until they're 100%. I'm hearing they're not going to play again today. Severe Wheeler, same thing. With those two lead guards out, this team offensively is not as dynamic. Now, they have gotten so much better. They're the most improved team in the country since November. Everybody is contributing. That's why they're able to beat LSU and Alabama without these two studs in their last two games. Now, this is on the road. 20,000 strong at Bud Walton. It's a different animal. I do not think they win this game. Arkansas continues to roll and what will be a fun, entertaining game. But in the end, the hampered, the, the, the banged up Wildcats just don't have enough. Yeah, Arkansas has won 15, it's 15 and won 12 out of their last 13 games. Uh, I mean, I really like what they've been doing this season, but like, as you mentioned, Kentucky, without their two guards, still able to get some big wins. So I think that's been the most impressive thing about this team so far. The matchup today that I am the most excited for, simply for the drama that it presents, is number three, Auburn at number 17, Tennessee, four Eastern on ESPN. And I'm talking about drama because this is Bruce Pearl coming back to Knoxville. That crowd is going to be fired up, Dallin. What do you got on this? <laughs> you storylines, Smith, storylines. Yes, it's going to be a rough environment. And it, this is... Tennessee's team, defensively, we knew they were really good coming into the year, but these two guards, Kennedy Chandler and Zakai Ziegler, have really changed this team. Now, Kennedy Chandler, we all knew coming in, was going to be a stud. He's been important since the beginning of the year. But Ziegler's insertion and playing more minutes, the other freshmen, it makes the game just easier for everybody. They're able to get in the lane and not and finish for themselves, pray for their teammates. Guys are shooting the ball with confidence, whether it's Santiago Vescovi uh, or Bailey. Everybody's really stepping up and making plays, and their offense has really improved. They like to play at pace. But Auburn likes to play in chaos. So this, in this game for Tennessee, you don't want to change the way you play. But when it gets chaotic, you're going to have to put the foot on a break occasionally. And maybe and they're more comfortable making it a half-court game. At times, maybe grind it a little bit. Don't change who you are. But don't let Auburn play in chaos because they're comfortable with that. Most teams are not. Yeah, a lot of Auburn's wins this year have been by uh, probably an average of double digits. But when they play close games, they've really found ways to almost lose those games. It's, it's been a, a struggle with them. So if this game is close, man, uh, Tennessee definitely got to have it. And that's the reason why they're the betting favorite in this, right? I mean, I don't know if I take the points for Auburn or if I take the points for Tennessee in this one. I got to. I got to ponder a little I, bit. I, I know you're, that, you're, you're getting three and a half some places. So, I mean, I, I might take three and a half because you think they can win, but it's, I, I don't know, man. I'm going to stay away from this game overall. The over, <laughs> it, over under might be the way to play. Are we, are we still point, sprinkling at this point, guys? Or are we just like full on ice <laughs> uh, in the cake? I don't well, know what I'm, we're doing. I'm trying anymore. to come out with a little more money this thing. weekend. It's a big weekend. The sprinkle is about odds. The sprinkle is about the odds when you can toss a little to win a lot. You know, so if you want to sprinkle a little bit on Auburn plus, you know, the money line, that might be. Might be worth it. I don't know. Money plus 125. I got to look right now. All right. Let's move on to the Big 12. Even without Christine here, we're still contractually obligated to talk about them constantly. All right. Now I got my shade in. Number uh, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Number 5 Kansas. Number 10 Baylor. What do you got here, Dallin? Guys, last time these two teams played, I was in studio with our guy, King McClure. He fresh out of Texas Tech. A couple of me and Baylor a couple years. He was despondent. He was on, <laughs> on air, almost like in tears, because Baylor was so bad in this game, and they just got blitzed. He didn't know what to do or say. I hope my man King is feeling better later today. It is in Waco. This will be a different game. But when they played in Kansas, Baylor just didn't show up. They didn't compete, which is incredibly rare for a program of this of this magnitude, a national champion last year, and the culture that Scott Drew has built. Now, the injuries have been a big problem for Baylor. We'll see if L.J. Cryer can go. He's been out for quite a bit. Flagler was in the last game and was big. Obviously, Jonathan John Chachua is not coming back. So the banged-up Baylor Bears have dealt with so much this year and are still dealing with a lot. But they still have a chip on their shoulder from the slacking they took in Lawrence. They're going to be coming home. A chance to really still compete for a Big 12 title. And this is going to be an outstanding game. I would lean Baylor right now, but in a really tight game. Overall, again, you want to play some betting lines. I think the over might be the play. Last I looked, I think it was at 150. Both these teams like to score. Defense has been a bit of a struggle for both these teams at times. Probably way to go. As a wise man once said, the best ability is availability. And Baylor hasn't had much availability. All right, let's move on to the top team <laughs> in all the land. Gonzaga, like Twitter, relax. We're getting one more game in just so that you don't yell at us about not getting the number one team in. Gonzaga finally playing a ranked team, number 23, St. Mary's. Uh, can, can St. Mary's get anything done here, Dallin? Uh, they can maybe take it to cover city. I believe the line is 11 and a half right now, but I don't think they ain't winning this game. Um, Randy Bennett's team is really good, St. Mary's, but Gonzaga's just different, guys. They're, their ability to flow into offense and take the ball to the rim with this unicorn Chet Holmgren and go all the way like he did against San Francisco, right? Uh, Ned Hart is one of the best point guards in the country. Drew Timmy's the best big man. Offensively, they are very, very comfortable, and there's nobody in the WCC to take them out of their comfort zone, to get up in them and challenge them. We saw Duke do it earlier in the year. We saw Texas Tech do it, albeit in a loss. We saw Alabama do it also in a win, just like the Blue Devils. 
So it's, it can be done. It's just not going to be able to run by Severn Sample by St. Mary. They're a good defensive team. They are going to grind it out. This game is about pace. Thing is, Gonzaga, even in a slow game, can still be very efficient, and you've got to slow them down. St. Mary's going to want to grind it out. I don't think they win at home. It'll be a great environment, a great game, a close game potentially. We've seen more than we've seen of WCC, but in the end, I think Gonzaga wins by eight, nine, ten. Points. Yeah, this is Gonzaga's first true road game. I haven't seen them play a lot of road games this season, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle this type of atmosphere for sure. The most important thing is to remind you that ESPN and the ESPN app is the home to these important college hoops games today, tonight. All you got to do is sign into your cable provider right here in the ESPN app. You can watch all day long. Look at all these matchups. Previously on Judge Dallin. I'm going to require a lot from my counselors to really step their game up, and, and I'm going to have to go with this beautiful picture here. For the first winner, it's going to be Christine. If it's, <laughs> the problem is it's just a mismatch again, so you got to oh. go with Christine. <sighs> I have to go with Christine Williamson now. Oh, um, this, is, this is whole. Remember this. the insubordination, counselor. When I ask you for something, you give it to me. Congratulations, Christine. Blatant disrespect, but <laughs> now we get to turn the tables. We get to play a little game we're going to call yes, 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 or that's going to be a no from me, dog. And we're going to do it with Dallin. See, by the way, the SEC did beat the Big 12 in that challenge. The judge was wrong. So now the judge goes on trial. We're going to do a little bubble watch fun. We'll give you the team. You make the argument on whether that team is in the tournament or not. And then we will either give you the yes, 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 or that's a no from me, dog, as to whether or not you have succeeded in uh, the right decision. You ready for this, Dallin? Well, being that I was a former judge, I'm going to add one addendum here. This is what I, this is what I think the committee is going to do. This isn't necessarily what I would do. This is going to be what I think the committee would do. Okay? All right, all right. We're already hearing excuses. You know what? what happens, You're no right? longer the judge at this point. <laughs> well, I'm watching up true kind. This isn't how we're, it works. We don't want to hear it. Here's, all right, let's start with Oregon. I don't these rules. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oregon, let, give, give me your case for Oregon. I think they're going to get in. I think this is their turn. They turned their, they were turning into the team we thought they would be in the non-conference. Non-conference, they bring in all these transfers, Davion Harmon, uh, Jacob Young, and others. Will Richardson, one of the sta uh, staples for Dana Altman in Oregon before. They're a real talented team, and they got good guard play. They play hard, and probably Dante's a tough, big, big man. And they really struggled to just compete, guys, and really put it together in the beginning of the season. But now they've stepped it up. They beat UCLA twice. They have USC again at home now. They beat USC on the road. Those are big wins. They now have three and four against quad one the teams. Again, folks, you're going to hear us say that a lot. Quad one wins are critical. Those are good wins, usually against the field. Quad two is still okay. You can't lose quad three and quad four games. They do have three quad three losses. That's problematic, but I'm looking at the talent on the team. I'm looking at what they've produced in recent weeks and months. This team is capable of getting and not just getting an NCAA tournament, but also winning a game, maybe two, depending upon their matchup. They are very talented, and when they put it together, they're dangerous as the LA schools figured out. So, yes, Oregon will be in the field at 58. You know, dog, you said a lot of great things there. It sounded great. I, I appreciate, you know, all the stuff that you said into it, but that's a no for me, dog. You know, this Oregon team, their coach once said that they keep playing down to their competition. Effort is something that they've lacked. But when they play up to the competition, they've played well. So that inconsistency has resulted in a no for me, dog. All right. Dallin, you're going to notice the theme here. See, I'm going to go, yes, yes, yes. But really what I'm telling you is, yes, that's a no for me, dog. <laughs> all right? Th this is all important. You you give this great resume, and then you leave off 81-57 thumping to Arizona State. Inexcusable losses. This team finds its way out. Oh, I cannot wait Woo. for the rest of this one. Let's go to Oklahoma next, Dallin. What do you got on this one? Can I, can I call the judges idiots? Is that okay? I mean, that can early on. I, I can't help myself, but I got the photos I'm dealing with here. I mean, you can Overruled. call it. You are in kid. Tip, sir! <laughs> Move on to Oklahoma! <laughs> this is great. All right. Uh, we got we got Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma's out, man. They're what? They're, 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 they play in the Big 12. It's rugged. It's tough. They have some good wins. You can't be sub-500 as far as they are, even in Big 12 play and still get in. So I think ultimately the committee will leave out Oklahoma. Yes! 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 Oklahoma is not getting in. I don't know what they've been playing like this season. I mean, some tough losses this year, but those losses are still losses at the end of the day, and you need to be able to get them when they matter the most. So, yes, they're out. <laughs> this one's difficult for me to couch this way. I'm going to say... That's a no for me, oh, dog. But on. what I really mean is that's a no. Oklahoma's not making the tournament. I agree with you. I'm just not going to say yes to anything <laughs> Dallin says. Let's move say, on. You know the rules? Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the judge. I, I, I'm, I'm breaking the rules here. North Carolina next, Dallin. What do you got on the Tar Heels? 
North Carolina is going to get in on brand, but they don't really deserve it, guys. They are 1-7 and seven against the quad, and quad one games. That Michigan win, we have the best win. That's not even a quad one win. Their one win was at Virginia Tech. They really are a team that has talent, has not performed at the level necessary. They'll have a few more, few more opportunities. They play at Duke next weekend, and maybe in the ACC tournament they get another quality win or two. But it's tough to come by in the ACC because it's so down. This North Carolina team that should be better, they are not. They've lacked the intangibles. I think they still get in, but I don't think they really deserve it. It, well, that was a weird answer. I don't know really what to say. They should get in, but the, that's a no for me, dog. You know, North Carolina is like that girl back in high school that used to look really good, and then you get older, and she fell off a little bit. But you still have that memory of how she used to look good. So you're kind of like, you know what? She's still just as pretty. No, she's not. She doesn't deserve to get your attention. So that's a no for me, dog. Uh, that's a no for me, dog. I was going to be a yes, but then you said yes, so now it's a no for me. They're going to lose early in the ACC tournament, and that's going to keep them out. Let's go next to Indiana. I'm going to find a reason here. What do we got on Indiana, Dallin? I feel like I want to play a mind game and just tell you the opposite because I want you to, to, take, to take my <laughs> point of view. Uh, and so Indiana, similar story to North Carolina. They, they do have a couple better wins, uh, and they have more opportunities down the stretch because the Big Ten has more quality teams in it for more quality wins. Ultimately, Indiana gets in. But Scooby, let's see if you can follow me. I don't think they deserve it, but they're going to get in. Is that clear enough for you? Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yes, I agree. That is a great point. Indiana is most likely going to get in the tournament, especially playing at the Big Ten. Wait <laughs> for it. That's a no for me, dog. You can't have a losing record in conference and still get into the tournament. I'm out on Indiana. Let's go next to Michigan. All right. Everybody's talking about the handshake, but also the team on the bubble. Where are you with them, Dallin? Well, first of all, you're stating opinion as facts, Judge, so let's just stop that real quick. If we can. Wow. Uh, wow. I would say also with this, when you look at their schedule coming up, the important part is they do have these games at home. So, again, it comes about opportunity. That's a quad one opportunity against Illinois. Michigan State at home will be quad two. Iowa will be flirting with the quad one where their numbers are at. they got to go at Ohio State. So if they can just stack wins, regardless of where those fall in the quadrant system, if they stack three of those wins into this thing, they're going to get in. So, again, they have opportunity. They are much better at home. This young team, Hunter Dickinson, is absolutely beast the interior. They have played better in uh, when they're in Ann Arbor. So, I look at the Michigan team and think, ultimately, they will get in because they have the opportunities. I think they capitalized like they did against Rutgers the other day. They took care of business at home in that game. You know, I really believe that this Michigan team has a lot of fight in them. Oh, Wow. See what yes! Wow. Yes! I'm going to go with them making the tournament. Uh, I love their big man. I love what they're able to do. And then when their head coach gets back, uh, like I said, they're going to have a reason to play and a lot of fight. Yeah, when their head coach gets back. <laughs> that's a no for me, dog. Why is that a no? Well, A, Dallin said it's a yes. But even more importantly, they don't have their head coach. You said if they can stack a bunch of wins, great. If I had more than a four-inch vertical, I might be able to dunk, too. Like, ifs, don't get it done getting in the tournament, Dallin. So, I'm out. <laughs> I'm, I'm saucy today. Who's getting in your tournament? Are we going to play the 48-team field? What are we doing? <laughs> who, who, who is getting in the 18 <laughs> What I mean, we didn't even get to UNLV. They're playing well. Maybe they find their way. I, get the hell out of here. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Dallin, we appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out with us, my friend. Always a pleasure. It's been pure hell. See you guys. <laughs> Dallin's never coming back on the show. All right. Let's take a look at the Baylor University campus in Waco. Why are we looking there? Because College Game Day set to come to you at the top of the hour on ESPN and the ESPN app. Again, you can authenticate if you're watching the app, and you can stay right here all day to watch some college basketball. Speaking of some great plays, let's take a look now at surprisingly great assists brought to you by State Farm. We start with Purdue. Trevion Williams going with the behind the Ooh. back pass right there. Ooh. Jaden Ivey for the flush. Look at this one again. He just says, whoop, whoop. there we go. Swiggity spooty going for the booty. Behind the back. Uh, well Filet. done. Texas A&M's Quinton Jackson drives, spins. Look at that. No look dime to Henry Coleman for the bucket. That's a little press the O button and then dunk it. Yeah, that's a good button. That's a good button to press on uh, down the lane. <laughs> Alabama's Javon Quinterly drives, also going behind the back saying, anything you can do, I can do better. Gets that fun in there. Uh, behind the back pass is all over the place. A little Mahomesian all day. Yeah, I like it. A little, little, little swiggy swooty right in the booty. Look at that. Auburn window <laughs> green. Sweet bounce pass. Look at that. Love a good bounce. He's like, I will get you the ball, sir, and you shall take care of it. Oh, so long. UCF staring green. Let's go back to some behind the back. He's like, up, Ooh. up, and away. 
Hey, I'd just hang up there for an extra hour if I ever dunked on anybody like that. But a beautiful <laughs> pass. And then Dukes, Wendell Moore closes us off. The long bounce pass. Ooh, ah! What precision. That's threading the needle. Sheesh. Well done. Great pass from there. Great pass from there. And all of a sudden, you end up with a great finish. Great play all around. Now let's take a look at the Wendy's wooden watch on the men's side. Kansas senior guard Oche Ogabi leads the Jayhawks in scoring this season. Average just over 20 points per game. 51% shooting from the field. 44% from three this week. Passed Wilt Chamberlain for 26th on Kansas' career scoring, scoring list. You can watch number five, Kansas, take on number 10, Baylor, tonight on ESPN, 8 p.m. Eastern. And then on the wooden, on the women's side, South Carolina junior forward, Aaliyah Boston, helping spearhead a dominant South Carolina squad. She has been crushing it. Leads the team with almost 17 points per game, just under 12 boards a game. Ooh. Currently, Boston has 20 straight double-double games and shooting over 54% from the field. That is incredible work by her. Now, the opposite of incredible is uh, what went wrong. College basketball teams, uh, they, try, they try hard to make sure everything goes right on game day. But we'll take a look now at a few situations that didn't go exactly how they were drawn up in a segment. We're calling What Went Wrong. And we'll start with the one everybody's been talking about. Michigan, Wisconsin, Jawan Howard, head coach. Wisconsin head coach Greg Gard meet up for the postgame handshake. And somehow it turns into WrestleMania? I mean, full Hulk Hogan? <laughs> Macho Man? And then the, I don't know what you got. It's a smoosh and a slap together. Like a sloosh of the face? It's not really a punch. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good word. Yeah, a sloosh, it, it's a mush. But it's like a slap and a mush. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all, all in one. Jawan Howard, by the way, now finds himself out for the rest of the regular season as a result of that. Let's go next uh, for you, Scooby, to Xavier Providence. All right, now in this play over here, <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, Nate oh. Watson steps up to play defense, and he gets crossed. Ankles completely snatched. Yeah. Now, what went wrong here is um, Nate Watson would tell you there just happened to be a little sweat on the floor, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that's what happened to catch his ankle. But really what happened, he got crossed uh, crisscrossed like, uh, like 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 the group back in the day, you know. Crisscross jump, yeah, jump, yeah, jump, yeah, jump. Uh, yeah, speaking yeah. of jump, jump, brilliant <laughs> transition. Dan Hurley, coach of UConn, is just turning around trying to get the crowd pumped up, and for that he got himself ejected. Unbelievable. I mean, he's look, he's like, yep, 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 getting, and then he's gone. He gone. Goes back to the locker room. I'm not sure what uh, what the refs were thinking there. Yeah. Um, uh, Every time you get kicked out of a game as a coach, it should be a rule to do this. Get the crowd pumped up. Now, what went wrong in this one? I'm going to check out. Check out. Check this out. Late in the game, Norfolk State down one, misses a shot. So they have to foul to stop the clock and check it out. Mahogany Williams Ooh. decides to do her best Aaron Donald impression. And what went wrong here? Uh, she's playing the wrong sport. She needs to put some shoulder pads on because she clearly... Uh, Wants to get real physical in the game of basketball. Shouldn't have done that. But what went wrong? She's uh, clearly playing the wrong sport. Yeah, that's what Dallin's going to do to me next time we see him. All right. Let's get you uh, out to Waco. Take a look at some of the scenes happening out there. Get you ready for college game day from Baylor University at the top of the hour on ESPN. And, of course, in the ESPN app. This electric atmosphere, Farrell Center on the banks of the Brazos, home to the reigning national champion, Baylor Bears. They welcome in a, an old nemesis, but really a new rival in the Big 12 in terms of going for supremacy. Kansas coming in here for a top 10 matchup. Reese Davis, Lafonso Ellis, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Billis. College game day at the top of the hour. Eight top 10 teams on the road this weekend. This is an exception. Baylor playing at home. Among all of these great ranked matchups, what's most intriguing to you? I think Auburn at Tennessee. Tennessee has got two top ten wins at home. One against Arizona, number two, number six, Kentucky. When I think about this Tennessee team, 70% of their points come from their backcourt. They force a turnover, 17% of their possessions at home. And they better, you know, get a flat out get after this Auburn team. Because Auburn's got Jabari Smith, maybe the number one pick in the draft. Walker Kessel blocks out the sun. But if Auburn's guards don't play well, Auburn's not winning this game. 
You know, we're only a couple of weeks and a day away from Selection Sunday, so who can help themselves the most this weekend? Yeah, it's it's Purdue playing at Michigan State. Michigan State needs this win badly. You're talking about a team that was a top 25 team, won their first game, first five games in the Big Ten. Since then, five of six. They need Gabe Brown to step up and play well. First five games in the Big Ten play, he was 15 points a game. Over these last five losses, he's at eight. They need him to step up and knock down shots with confidence. He's lost his swagger a little bit. And in order for them to get it back, he's got to knock down shots. And then prime time tonight, Kansas and Baylor. They won't cheer if they hear me mention the first matchup. Jayhawks annihilated them. What are you looking for tonight? Look, anytime Baylor's playing against Kansas, they have to be concerned with the Jayhawks transition. They have to deal with rebounding. They have to deal with Ochai Abachi and, and Christian Brown in the backcourt. But in the last ball game, Baylor won the offensive rebound battle and they won the turnover battle. The problem is they didn't convert on those things. They didn't score points off turnovers. They didn't score points off their offensive rebounds. And they lost the points in the paint battle 48 to 26. That's minus 22. That's got to change in this game. So Adam Flagler has to have a good game. He's got to play well. Uh, he, he, I don't know whether LJ Cryer is even going to play in this one. Jonathan Chamwachachua lost for the season. But Baylor is still formidable. If they convert, if they finish plays, Baylor's got a great chance to win here in this building. Well, coming up on College Game Day, we'll visit with Scott Drew. That will be popular here. Also talk about the return of Paige Beckers to the UConn women. It is all coming up on College Game Day. Also, I don't know if you guys heard or not, Michigan had a pretty wild week. We'll talk about that. Oh, the guys are fired up. Before you oh, get yeah. to them, let's take a look at some, in case you missed it, some of the best moments. You're watching Countdown to Game Day covered by State Farm. Scooby McGuess and Jason Fitz. Here's some of the best moments from the week in college basketball, and it starts with Purdue's Jaden Ivey. Turns the corner, crushes it on two guys. Bang! Not one, but two. Take another look at this one. Come I mean, on, yeah, and, and yes, you're allowed to have that just swagger at all times when you do that. I mean... Elevate. I have no idea what that would ever look like. Next up, we'll go over to Eastern Kentucky at Central Arkansas for a little women's action. Going to be happening here. Start of the second half delayed because of a bat in the arena. I really think the bat was just promoting the Batman movie. I don't know, but the bat, <laughs> fearless, flying around the court, buzzing to people. Reminds me of the Mono Ginobili uh, when, he, when he had the bat with the Spurs. Would you try and catch a bat if a bat was uh, out in an Absolutely arena? not. You would not try and catch a bat? No. Okay. I don't know what that probably thing, Ben. That, that's probably fair. Like, And I would run screaming like a child the entire time, which is no surprise to anybody. And, uh, of course, we can't let you get out of here without seeing this moment from Tom Izzo. We talked about Jawan Howard and the Michigan and Wisconsin incident, the handshake. But that led to Tom Izzo, Michigan State coach, being asked about getting rid of the postgame handshake after a game this week. He was fired up with this response. That's not happening here. So if some team doesn't want to shake hands, you're going to see 15 of my guys walk down shake air we're gonna shake air and I'm gonna shake air and then we're gonna leave I cannot say this loud enough any concept of trying to get rid of the Makes handshake no line should at least acknowledge the fact that this wasn't about the kids this was two grown-ass men that did not know how to act in a handshake line like that has got these are two high-paid educators leaders of men that couldn't figure it out and we're talking about changing the rule to protect kids like what about the adults that act like that how does that teach the kids to be adults that you need to run away from the person that just beat you no walk up to them shake their hand and show them some respect shaking hands is all a part of the game it should not be taken out respect to Tom Izzo and uh, come on it's the grown men that we're arguing yeah and, and look I, there's some spot here where Jawan Howard this is his second incident in the last two years and now he will miss the last five games we talked earlier about the bubble watch there should be serious conversations within the Michigan program if they don't win games down the stretch and it causes them to miss the tournament of at least acknowledging that your head coach's actions force them to be in a deficit in games that matter going down the stretch. In oh, the yeah. meantime, there's a ton of college basketball happening today. It's a good you guys day, just authenticate in the app. You can hang out here and watch good it all day, day long. He's Scooby McGezza. I'm Jason Fitz. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. This has been Countdown to Game Day, covered by State Farm. Wait, wait, we shaking hands? No, we're not shaking hands. <laughs> well, they cut the camera. Peace out. Oh. We got, we got, we, they're doing like all sorts of routines. We were just, they, they, they look good. They look good. You got me like, College game day is back on the road, and we get to be back amongst the people. How great is this?